All right, before we go any further, do not skip this. I want you to watch this all the way through. I want the whole video, okay? Now, the reason for this is because the last time I made a video that was going in depth about a lot of things, how to boost your GE video, a lot of people ask a lot of questions that I answer literally in the video. So if you would be so kind as to watch this video all the way through, maybe I will answer your question before you ask it. And if I do not answer the question, feel free to let me know down below. But this video is for all of you guys out there that have been constantly requesting me to make this video. There's like a bajillion of you guys commenting and DMing me and everywhere asking me to make a video on bass tuning, even though I already did. But apparently, the video is not good enough. So here's a fresh one for you guys. I'm gonna go from the beginning to the end, so that way you guys will be happy, and hopefully this will successfully make your car run, okay? I just want you guys to be happy, okay? Currently, my Supra is in a predicament, so we will be building a base map for idle and rev for now, and then the next part will be for drivability. But, listen, I need you guys to stop and subscribe, because I have a lot of you guys that watch me, but then do not follow me. I am not a how-to channel. I sprinkle stuff like this over all of my videos. But this has been requested so much, like I was saying, that I just have to make it because I have so many people saying, Will you tune my car? I'm sorry, I will not tune your car. It takes a lot of time, and hopefully this video will help all of you, okay? Tuning, in general, is easy, but it takes time, and it's time-consuming. So, if you have the motivation to learn, then you will be able to get it done. And hopefully I can cover all the bases with you guys, and to get you guys understanding exactly what should be going on, okay? With that being said, if you guys are interested in anything Jay-Z related, Big Turbo related, going fast, you know, the drag strip, anything, street racing, digs, all that stuff. And I'm talking to all of you guys with your 1 Jay-Z's, 1.5 Jay-Z's, 2 Jay-Z's, non-VVTI, GE, VVTI, the whole freaking nine yards, I don't care, I, I do Evos and stuff too. But anyways, anything Turbo related, if you guys like Turbo sounds, stop right now and hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon so you guys stay up to date with all my new uploads. And let's get into this video. Okay, so something that I have been waiting for actually in the mail and it, like I ordered two because one was taking so long and then they both come at the same time makes no sense. Uh, one of the biggest things that I re recommend before you guys do this is to make sure a wideband sensor is installed to your ECU. So currently I have two wideband sensors and before any of you guys come jumping down my throat, I do know that the sensor is best to be like, what, 14 inches or something away, but uh, this is the same downpipe here that I have been running on rice box before I did the bumper turbo build on it. So I do know for a fact that it works and it does work the way it should. That is what we're going to be working with guys. I do recommend to have that sensor placed a little bit further away as the heat directly from the turbo will burn them up pretty quickly. I always buy a bunch of extras on hand, so I have them. I'm gonna wire this in real quick, and then I will get into the settings and everything, all the presets that you guys need to be paying attention to in the ECU. Let's go ahead and get started here. I'm gonna open up a base map. So this map has been set up already to get a car idling in a certain setup. Most of my setup will be similar to the map, but I'm gonna go over all the parameters and everything that you need to know to get your car started with the coils, the injectors, all that stuff. I'm gonna go over a complete base map here, and I will even show you when I'm ready to start the car. You can get a base map yourself. If you guys join the ECU Master Tuning and Tech Tips on Facebook, they have an entire selection of downloads that people have made for base maps for the ECU Master Black and the Classic. So I'm gonna go over the ECU Master Classic, but everything for the ECU Master Classic, you can basically, there are select maps in the black, that are actually different from the classic, but everything is pretty much straightforward, and that goes for all ECUs. Everything is gonna be basically the same across all the ECUs, but the software itself will have a different layout and things will be different. But if you know what you're looking for, and hopefully after this video, you guys will understand a basics of tuning, then you'll be able to figure it out yourself. So my car, my Supra is basically the same setup as Ricebox, where there is a non-VVTi 2JZ GE bottom end 
with a 1JZ head. Now the 1JZ head is the non-VVTi version, whereas the 240 actually had a 1JZ VVTi head. Currently as the car is being built, it is a 2JZ GE VVTi head on a non-VVTi bottom end. It's a non-turbo long block basically, but VVTi head, non-VVTi bottom. Now it doesn't matter what the head is, it does not matter period. The only thing that matters is what you're setting your actual cylinder size to. So the engine size, you know, if it's a 3 liter or a 2.5 liter, the cylinder head does not matter, the block itself does. So in this map here that I'm going to choose, which is a 1JZ startup map, it's going to be set up as a 2.5 liter. And I'll be going over that here in just a moment. I'm going to want to make sure that the key is set to on. Now the IAT sensor, it's going to be the factory IAT sensor, so we're going to go with the 1JZ IAT sensor because this is the stock IAT sensor in the engine. If you guys are using a GM sensor, you will more than likely choose the GM 250 selection here, which is a the GM sensor you will normally get when you're doing an IAT conversion. I'm still running the stock IAT sensor that is in the plenum of the manifold. So we're going to choose the 1JZ GTE one. You don't need it for a car to run and for an example, I didn't have it for the first 2 years that I had my big turbo build on the 1J or on the 240. The only thing that's going to benefit there is if you have an IAT sensor, there's more range of adjustment that your ECU can make for the temperature that your intake air is pulling in. Map sensor will be the same sensor that is in the ECU. So we're going to use the built-in map. It's already checked ready to go TPS is one of the bigger things here now if you look here this is the tune display there's a lot of other selections that you can do down and the bottom here if you go to the gauges there's a lot of things that you can bring up so if there's anything that you're curious to look curious to see if you want to have your coolant temp popped up uh, otherwise you can use this here and any of these selections if you right click you can set a channel log and you can choose from any of these things but you right click on the item there that you want to change. So in my situation, I've already got an RPMs and I actually like the setup that I have here. So we're going to pick, go back to AFR and set it back. And if you guys watched the setting my base map, my AFR is messed up because we're not using a narrow band anymore. We are using a wide band. So we're going to have to go back in and change that here in just a moment. But if you look, The TPS it says 6%, and when I hit the throttle, it says 100. Now, ideally, obviously, when your foot is not on the when your foot is not pulling the throttle, it needs to be at zero. So here's what you do: you take this minimum voltage, and you adjust this arrow one direction or the other, and you can see that it moved. So you adjust it until it reaches zero, and then you go one at a time until you're one off of one percent so in my case we'll be at 0.79 so in the other way we're going to put the throttle all the way open so it's 100 we're going to go up with it until it starts to read 90. so in my case started to read 90 at about 3.8 actually so make sure you are one click into 100 so you get the maximum So that way you get the maximum range of voltage. So now that you have the TPS set, you'll close out, we'll go back to the sensor setup, and we'll go back to the oxygen sensor. Oh, and actually it is already set to wideband, so that must have been a preset in the base map here, which is good. That's actually a good thing. Here's your extra sensors. So if you have an oil pressure sensor, plug right into the analog and set it it'll start reading low pressure same with any of these things here fueling injector wizard in my case i have some uh stock injectors so we're just going to leave them as they are here um, if you were to have any other type of injector such as a thousand cc you just go down and use the id settings or the deutschworks so um in my case, if I were using 2000s or 2200s, I will pick the ID2000. They're just presets, so if you wanted to change your actual trims or your latencies, you can go to injector calibration, which is here, and you can change all of these values to match the actual printout that you should have received when injectors were tested. So fuel cut is going to fuel cut when you start to get above a up 
like an actual boost pressure. So in my case, 49.9, 47.9 PSI is not actually what you think. If you look here, the engine is not running, so it's at 14.9 PSI, which is actually the barometric pressure when that's the pressure that is constantly being pressed on us that pressure will change as you go higher and lower in elevation so basically whenever the car is running it's going to pull a vacuum and the vacuum is going to be a certain amount in my case when the engine's running it should pull about eight pounds so if you go and look at a log and you're hitting a boost pressure you need to subtract the amount of pressure that is on your vacuum from the maximum boost pressure. So 14.9 subtracted from 47.9 is going to be, it's gonna be about 32 pounds. So about 32 pounds, you're gonna do a fuel cut. So the engine will stop firing the injectors. Okay, so here's the injector phase. Um, in the stock 1JZ non-VVTi, the injectors are actually batched. So if you guys, if any of you that know about the uh, wasted spark setup on the VVTi engines. This is the other way of this. So in the non-VVTi engines, the engi all of the coils are individual, but instead of having a wasted coil setup, it's basically a wasted injector setup. So the injectors fire twice per ignition event. And I've actually rewired it to where everything will fire individually. So in this, you just wanna set them up as the firing order. Okay, so next we're gonna go to the coils. Typically, whenever you are running a wasted spark setup, you will run a double fire coil. So it's exactly like I was explaining here with the injectors. I'm gonna go ahead and set my coils. They are a single fire, so I'm using an AEM smart coil. So they're individual coils and they have a built-in igniter in them. So we're gonna use a single fire coil here. And that's just a preset. I'm actually gonna go into my dwell settings and change those. And the dwell settings are something very important that you need to make sure that you get with the coils that you're using, you can look them up normally, and then you can change your voltage patterns for the dwell that that's needed. It's important, and as long as you're using the proper coil setup, then you should be good. So with the ignition output, typically you're supposed to have the firing order set the exact same as the injectors. And that's what I've heard, and I don't understand why my ignition outputs are actually different from the firing order of the, of the injectors. But one of the things that you can do is if you're, if you're having issues, pull your coil out, set a spark plug in it, and you can come up here to the tools, and you can go to test outputs, and you can actually test your outputs as you go. So you can test your injectors and your ignition. So you can come out here, set your ignition, and you can go through their coils and make sure the ignition is set correctly. And you need to have the coils wired as coil one, as coil one on the front of the engine, cylinder one through however many you have. Make sure you wire them directly to the ECU as they are. So ignition one to coil one, ignition two to coil two, and so on. But what you want to do is you want to come through here, go to your ignition, test it, make sure the ignition one is firing on the cylinder one. So next we're going to go to the primary trigger. And the primary trigger, it's the tooth ring that is sits behind the actual crank gear. And that gear is what runs by the magnet on the crank sensor and it reads a small voltage. Now it is the, uh, the signal that it sends is actually to let the ECU know where the crank is in the revolution. So if you guys have a VVTi engine and you have the ring with all little teeth on it and there's a small little gap, you will be picking the tooth wheel with two missing teeth and the falling, the trigger edge should be rising. Uh, with a 1JZ, with the older engines, so anything, the non-VVTIs should be a multi-tooth and it will be all the little triangles. And there should be just a few of them. There will be no gaps or anything in between. The trigger angle is very important. You need to make sure that your timing is set properly. This is how you adjust for improper timing for the ignition timing. So your mechanical timing has to match your ignition timing. So if you are set there idling, the computer says that you are at 14 degrees advanced and you go and use a timing light on your harmonic balancer and the harmonic balancer says that you're at 20 degrees advanced, you need to adjust this number to make them numbers the same. Um, so up or down will make them similar. 
So since I've already done my ignition timing and I've done my used a timing light, I do know for a fact that I have to adjust for a lot, so my trigger angle will be set at 51. You need to make sure 100%. This, this number that I'm putting here does not matter. You just need to make sure that you have somebody in the car cranking the car while you're using a timing light. Don't let the car run because if the car is running and your timing is the other direction, you could be firing it close to zero, which is not good. You do not want zero degrees of timing. So knock sensors. You guys are not going to believe this, but I do not use knock sensors. The amount the the 240 makes a lot of power, and let's be real. Even if I have a knock sensor, if I'm going down the drag strip at 30 pounds of boost and I am at 900 wheel horsepower, a when my engine detonates, it's toast anyways. And a detonation can occur from a variety of things, like a simple vacuum leak or a boost leak. A boost leak on one cylinder. If your intake manifold has a boost leak on one of the runners, more fuel will go into that cylinder. That can cause detonation. If you have a vacuum leak, more air will come into that cylinder, will cause detonation. If you have an injector that's sticking, that can cause detonation. Having a knock sensor is for getting extremely close to the max timing that you can run for the max power. I mean, in my opinion, that's what I would use it for. I stay away from the max amount of timing that you can have. I run E85 consistently on everything except for the Supra, which I will be converting to E85. So if you guys are running pump gas, if you guys are running like 91 or 93, I suggest keeping your timing a lot lower. And I will come over that in just a moment. I don't really like talking about ignition timing because if you set it up wrong, that will literally cause detonation. Like setting too much timing, you will cause constant detonation which is not something that you want to do for those of you that don't know what detonation means it is when the pistons on the way up and it fires so it combusts against the top of the piston and it pushes the rod towards the crank when and it, it basically stops the efficiency of the engine otherwise known as pinging if you guys have not heard what the sound sounds like i have a video just search it what de what audible detonation sounds like so I'm not going to really go over knock sensors all too much because I don't actually run them. But if you guys want knock sensors, it's as simple as, you know, plugging them into knock sensors, into your knock sensor ports and make sure you get the proper setups for them. So I'm not going to go over that too much. For your idle, um, I'm actually not running idle air control on anything. But just like everything else, an idle air control valve is set up along these parameters normally if you have a base map everything's already properly set up so you can actually come over to your you can run through your target rpm and this was your temperature versus your rpm so the bottom line here is your temp so as you're obviously when you cold start you want a higher idle and as the temperature goes up your idle will come down you can set that idle if you're like me and you do not run an idle air control valve you can actually use ignition control here which is something that you can use your the, the ecu will adjust your ignition timing to properly set idle so you can have a consistent idle if you use it so if you set it up here and you use the correction table you come down to a ignition correction you can adjust this table here basically you will when you're idling there will be a red line indicating where you're at in that general area you will use the plus or minus symbols to adjust this and the idle will move up or down and in this case if the car is running your ignition timing here when it's reading is going to be and all sorts of variety it's not going to be matching the ignition table because it's going to be using ignition timing so long as your foot is not on the throttle it's going to be using ignition timing to set your idle so do not be worried when if you set that and you see your ignition angle going wild and showing all sorts of different numbers all right so out of idle outputs these are everything if you want your fuel pump to run off the ecu that's how you set it up coolant fan is all straightforward you attack tachometer so typically auxiliary four is uh, what you run your tack output so you'll run a wire from that and it will go to your actual tack on your on your dash and you 
everything that reads on here will read on there. And when the numbers are not correct, you can use this here and you can adjust it up. And as you're sitting there idling or revving, as you move this number, your needle will move too. So you set it to where your RPM is reading on the ECU. So these outputs are pretty straightforward. So you will use auxiliary and basically anything right here, your output setting, you can use any of these settings. Yes, it shows injector because if, you, like I was saying earlier, if you have a 1JZ non-VVTI and you're leaving it factory, you will have a 246 firing order. It double fires each injector on the firing order. So you will have three injector ports that you can use to activate some of these outputs. I know boost is one of the bigger things. Um, you will use a wheel horsepower boost controller and you will wire it in. Um, your boost switch here is gonna be the exact same as the output, but you will use analog instead. And when you activate it, you will literally be able to set up a boost or gear scale so you can set up your boost by gear as what well. so if you're using your gear scale you will have to use your gear scale with the vss uh, boost control so in your sensor setup here when you go to vss and gearbox oh, let me go back so when you go to your vss gearbox when you have this all set up properly you will be able to use your boost gear scale to set your duty cycle these percentages are the actual duty cycle for the waste gates so 60 percent duty cycle is 60 percent of the waste gates max capacity uh 100 is 100 percent of the waste gates max capacity so one of the biggest things that people are saying or asking for is the boost target now like i was saying before whenever you have your idle set if you guys look on If you look on the tune display here, currently the car is not running, like I was saying earlier. It's at 14.9 PSI of pressure. Now, that is the barometric pressure. That's pressure that you're breathing. That's what's pressed on us right now. When the car is running, it pulls a vacuum. So your vacuum is initially at about 7 or 8. So basically, you will subtract that 7 or 8 away from these numbers. So if you subtract seven or eight away from this, you will actually be pulling a negative number, which is typically the negative PSI that you get with an engine running. Whenever you are seeing, when you see the negative pressure on a boost gauge, it's not in PSI, it's in some other sort of thing. <laughs> I don't even remember what it is, but it's not PSI. That's why the number is so much larger. If you look here down at the bottom, this is under throttle position. So you can set your boost to act, you can set your boost to gradually come in on throttle and then your RPM as well. So at 30, 40% throttle, 2600 RPM, this is saying about 18 pounds, which is about 10 PSI if you subtract the numbers about right, which that's kind of insane. This map is not set up properly, period. I mean, this is a, uh, this is essentially obviously stock turbo map so if you're running a big turbo this is just not gonna happen you're just not gonna pull 10 pounds of boost at 40 percent throttle at 2600 rpm it's just not gonna happen so you will set this up properly okay so drive by wire i really don't want to go over this because i do not use drive by wire i prefer the full mechanical throttle i don't like things to fail more electronics in my opinion is just more things to fail and I try to remove everything I possibly can so I have the bare minimum on my engine to actually run efficiently. And I know a lot of people have a lot of electronics, they have lots of sensors and lots of different things and it's great to have a, a wide variety of different inputs and things to look at to see what your engine is doing and I actually do plan on running all the pressure sensors and all that stuff that you would n typically want to run but drive by wire to activate your throttle i wouldn't run it other people would i don't know how to set it up because i do not run that but, all right guys this video is going to be super freaking long and i'm about nine percent battery on the gopro so i am going to cut this video here 
So if this video helped you, please drop a like. Let me know in the comments if this did help you or if there's something that you guys want to know and I can, uh, you know, experiment with things and let you guys know how things work. Obviously, as we progress and uh, get further into this, hopefully you guys will have a wider mindset on how the tuning process works. It's pretty straightforward and pretty easy. So that is going to be it for the part one of this tuning segment here. And um, I will catch you guys in the second part. Later.